Montana is often advertised as the wild soul of the West. The landscape is raw, the elements are unforgiving, and real monsters still meander through the forest. Hey bear. Hey bear. Going completely solo in the backcountry may seem dumb to most, and describing the duality of a lonely trail to those individuals is always difficult. The sinister intimidation of being truly alone will make every muscle fiber twitch with anxious anticipation. But that's where the other side of the sword comes into play. The relative unknowing and fear feeds the curiosity, and like a gravitational pull, drags you around that next bend. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. That's a good fish. That is a very good fish. This promise of untouched fishing is mighty tempting for the adventurous angler, but is the risk really worth the reward? Hey wolf! Hey! Oh my god, did you guys see that? That is so intense. Heavy bags, bad weather, and wildlife encounters are usually the barriers to entry needed to keep most fair weather anglers on the roadside rivers. I'm gonna be spending the next few days alone searching for the native gems hidden far away in the Montana backcountry. My name is Mike, and this is a Fly All Season story. I really hope you stick with and enjoy. Okie doke, deep breath. It was time to lock in. My stomach didn't sit well, knowing that this was all just a hunch. A few whispers of phantom forks perked my ears, and curiosity moved me enough to end up at this mysterious trailhead. The doubt of this decision weighed heavy on my mind, much like the weight now biting down on my shoulders. Ah, yes. Grizzly country. Much like the wardrobe from Narnia, once past the threshold of the trailhead, you're now entering a wild new world. This omnipresent threat of an untimely interaction with one of these real life monsters gave me goosebumps and heightened all of my senses. Whew. Those are fall winds right there. Good God. That feels like fall. I'm really glad this is open right now because the more open it is, is the better advantage I have of seeing or hearing something well in advance versus sneaking up you know, in the middle of a thicket or something and spooking something. This is nice that I can kind of see for a distance. Outside of a few nervous deer, I seem to be the only figure occupying the trail. The grandeur of Montana was very much on display as I entered into the main river corridor, and feeling my guard lowering in the face of this beauty, the angry chatter of a nearby pine squirrel snapped my brain back into red alert. I found that these mouthy little rodents are a great pre-warning system when walking through the woods, but I think this time, he was just barking at me. Pushing down the doubt and fainting bravado while gripping the butt of my pistol, I sheepishly announced my presence to the void just to be sure I was truly alone. Hey bear. Hey bear. Well, there she was one of the major forks of the mighty Blackfoot sitting right in front of me. Truly the siren song to any angler passing over her deep blue, this water looked extremely fishy, but it didn't quite fit the description for what I was after. Like a good Argonaut, I ignored the temptation and maintained my measured pace upstream. Welcome to the scapegoat. Man, I didn't want to get wet just yet. Ah, oh, frick. Yeah, I gotta go across that.
This is gonna be chilly. Woo! Yep. Confirmed. Chilly as heck. Ugh. Oh man, that's cold. Okay. River crossing complete. My wet sandals squished down on the powdery earth and I was happy to have one more major hurdle now in the rearview mirror. With an odd sense of comfort settling in, my familiarity with the sights and sounds around me gave way to false confidence. Knowing better than to fall into that tempting lull, I continued to whoop and holler all the way down the trail. Hey bear. Hey bear. Finally pulling away from the Blackfoot, I made first contact with the Phantom Fork plaguing my imagination. As expected, the bed of the confluence was very dry and devoid of life. From what I'd read, adventurous anglers would need to keep the faith and know that water would eventually flow. It just might cost a few more miles than most are willing to pay. Holy smokes, that's a little fish. Ah. That's a trout, that's so funny. Yep, that's a little trout, all the way up here. Someone's living in here. Okay, I mean, finding actual proof of life is pretty good, right? Now feeling hot on the trail, not but a few bends later, this phantom fork finally revealed itself. Damn, that's a big fish. Good lord. Wow, that's still so dry down there. I guess those fish at the other pool were just trapped. That's crazy. Waiting on some rain, I guess. Continuing up the ridge, I could see the frequency of water steadily increase until I heard a full-fledged stream flowing strong. Stamina was starting to fade, and given the time crunch of this trip, my growing impatience had me scanning the now vibrant creek side for a potential camp. Seems like a pretty sweet spot. Kind of away from the trail, but still close. Yeah, somebody's been here before, that's for sure. Yeah, this is a pretty established campsite, huh? Oh, that's neat. Well, good luck, talisman. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, this is definitely a campsite. Ah, pretty nice little glade here. Yeah, something about this makes you think I had to, I had to run it up here. This ain't half bad. Oh my goodness gracious, my body is feeling it right now, but we're at somebody's old camp. I'm gonna repurpose it and make it my own, but this is, uh, yeah, I think this is gonna be home for the next few days. Uh, personally, I need to get some food and uh, water in me before I do any sort of setup. My body is really, really, really feeling it. So I'm gonna go sit by the creek, see if I can see any fish, and yeah, we'll have a little bit of time here after we're done setting up to get in the water. So this is good, this is really good. You can see a nice fish right there, another one right there. There's a few more little guys tilling out, but man, this is, uh, I mean, this is the <laughs> the home base pool and it's full of fish. I wonder what, uh, what the rest of this joint looks like. This is so nice. The two-ton buffalo that had been sitting heavy on my chest finally floated away like one of the valley moths. Praise be to the fish gods, there was actually trout here, and from first glance, plenty of them. Knowing this wasn't a complete bust, shot a second wind into my drooping sails. Seeing as I was alone, I had to make sure to maximize the outcome of each decision made. Whether armchair quarterbacks agree or not, I've been doing this backcountry thing for a long time now, and each silly rhyme has some sort of reason. And that's why finding this trio of healthy trees was the perfect spot to place the tent.
shallow soil full of rocks meant that my tent stakes were next to near useless, so opting for a stone lining to hold down the rain fly would have to suffice. The basics were starting to come together, and after hanging up the bear bag, I was still feeling uneasy about my shelter. There were quite a few large branches from down trees in the area that would thread together to make a wonderful perimeter fence. Lashing them all together with a few hundred yards of paracord would take more time than I care to admit, but in the long run, it would be more than worth it simply for my peace of mind. All right, the last camp things are getting taken care of. Okie dokie. Camp setup took a little bit longer than expected. My bear fortress. It took a minute, but it's uh, it is complete now. Got to rig up the reels, and uh, yeah, we're gonna be hitting the water. I'm I'm very very excited. Just I mean, literally the home base pool is just teeming with fish. So this is I mean at least at least we know there's some sitting here. But uh, something to note is just saw a big mule train pass, and it looks like this and probably this this entire valley but this camp in particular was at one point an elk camp can't say i'm uh too too displeased with seeing some people out here especially a big mule train like that hopefully just the activity gets any any critters out of this area you know so yeah let's get these rigged up uh yeah i mean we're just after one o'clock we get a whole day to fish so this is gonna be it's gonna be good <coughs> okay i think we're as good as we're gonna get here. Now I'm almost certain these guys get harassed, but I figured I might as well try. See if we can get one or two, because in reality, this is gonna be my bathtub and my drinking fountain, not really my fishing home. So might as well catch them while I can, and then yeah, just leave them as uh, friends for the rest of the trip. Oh. Man, they're chasing each other. Good lord. You crazy sons of bitches. Whoa, dude. You got a chunk taken out of you. What the heck is that about, man? Dang, buddy. You're getting munched on by something there, friend. Yikes! Oh, that's a good fish. Holy smokes. Damn, buddy. Nice fish, yeah, there we go. Yep, buddy got every bit of that Turk's tarantula. You are fired the heck up, man. Oh, that was a good fish. Wow, wow, wow. We do. Come on, man. They are just crushing this thing. Easy, feller. Easy does it, feller. You look like a hybrid. You are a cut bow, sir. Wonder where you got some bow in you. Where'd that come from, huh? Come on, you barely got. You barely got. Oh my goodness! No! Ah! Oh, little guys. There's some big boys in there though. Looks like another cut though. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. That's a good fish. That is a very good fish. That's a rainbow, what the heck? I found the culprit, I found the daddy. Damn, boy! 
Damn, you are stocked up, man. Good lord. That's a fish and a half right there. Golly. I mean, that Turk's tarantula is monched down. That's a phenomenal fish. See ya. Dang. Now, there was a lot of rainbow in that cut bow, but he still had a little, little nick on his chinny chin chin, making him a cut bow. But man, this is like almost ideal. They are so stacked up. I mean, I'm going one, two casts, just getting multiple hits on each. And he might have been the pool boss, but uh, I can't control myself, so fingers crossed there's another one in there. There's another one in there. There we go. There was another one in there. And that barb just pops right out. Adios. Yeah, it's all starting to get narrow like this. I don't know if I want this. I don't, I don't, I don't. I think I'm gonna head back downstream a bit. The size of the water noticeably began to shrink with each step. This was bad. I wasn't even all that far away from camp, but things were already shifting so fast. This was somewhat surprising, but it wasn't even close to what I ran into next. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that big log jam down there, but there is a carcass. It looks like a deer, um, half eaten, and the critters are going crazy all the way down. I kind of, I saw it and I basically ran back because if there is a, critter in the area it might be claimed and they might be coming back that is way too scary oh my gosh I don't like that at all <sighs> surfacing out of the riparian corridor and back to the trail this distressed doe was a potential clue to what was lurking in the area I just didn't put two and two together at the time. There must have been an apex predator in the valley. So I've gone both directions at this point and I am back where I started. Um, upstream looks skinny and downstream there was a dead deer and it got skinny again. And, and I, I don't know, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. However, um, I'm not gonna push it. I'm just gonna fish you know, the productive runs, go over them again, be a little bit more precise. It might be an early night, you know, it's just after three. It's been a long day, and uh, I mean, getting one fish was the bonus. Getting more than a few, that's fine, but uh, it's something about bear country's got me spooked. And I, don't, uh, I don't quite like that feeling. And the jig's up. I think the fishing's done for the day. It's time to ice bath, get some dinner, and uh, yeah, go to bed. I'm tired. Chicken Alfredo or beef pasta with marinara. Woo -hoo. These both look like absolute, absolute dang units. Holy smokes. Hey, this one's so dense. I think I'll save this one for tomorrow. Mamma mia, we have dinner in our bag, almost ready to munch down on. So, well that, uh, yeah, rehydrates. I figured this would be a half decent time to sit down and talk about bear safety. Now, I know some of you out there probably don't need to 
hear about this, but you know, some folks, maybe you don't go to these kind of areas and yeah, you get to experience the kind of the freaky nature of, of being in their domain. But um, yeah, this is, um, it's just one of those things that you gotta do. And it's pretty simple. It, in theory, it's pretty simple, but you hear stories all the time of um, backpackers getting dragged out of their tents or um, random chance attacks on the trail, just turning a blind corner and boom. And so, you know, things that you can do on the trail, like actively do um, when, you know, especially solo dolo like I am, um, sing, whistle, talk to yourself. I, I'm, I'm a little hoarse actually because I've been just talking to myself all day and hooting, hollering, whooping hay bears all over the place. And, you know, it's it's kind of an awkward thing, and it's but it's just something you got to get over because... You, know, you turn that corner and boom there's a bear and if you've been silent you've been a little sneaky you know they can't hear you they're gonna get surprised and then that's it's a mess all around but things that I do here in camp um, to help deter bear interactions obviously hanging up the bear bag far away from camp mine I know I can see the orange string but it's it's far enough away where I you know it's it would be well out of the way if something came over and sniff and uh, another thing that I've done, I've kind of created a fortress, and that's not, uh, you know, that's not exactly necessary by any means. A lot of folks just, you know, rock the tent, but there's some sort of uh, a peace of mind that I get knowing that there is a solid structure around, and then also the paracord structure, and then also the bells. So I know that there are walls around me, walls, and um, some sort of noise, a noise not of nature that I can ping into and say, oh, that's from that direction or oh there's something at the front or you know what I mean but again those are those are kind of extra but another thing that I've been doing and this is maybe a bit more crude um, but I've been holding in all of my all of my pisses today and I, I've been making sure to make a perimeter so I'm urinating all the way around my perimeter uh, as much as I can especially under my bear bag just like spreading my scent and letting yeah, anything in the area know that um, there is something else here and hopefully to steer clear. So, yeah, I mean, outside of, of those kind of things, of course, you know, your firearm, your bear spray, I even have a bear horn. So I'm carrying all three of those things just in case, you know, something were to pop up. You know, you have the kind of more active deterrent like a bullet or the bear spray. And then you also have the sound of the gun that, you know, could help um, break that interaction or the the bear horn that would also help you know alert or break the interaction so yeah keep an ear out for critters because they're going to be your first warning sign you know you'll hear something you'll hear something and then boom next thing you know could be having a a interaction with the bear and and, and keep your nose out too the the smell of dead that's a big big thing if you smell that out here get get out of dodge like like i was saying down um, downstream a little bit, I came across a carcass. Now I couldn't quite smell it, so it must have been pretty fresh. I I'm not quite sure, but I didn't stick around long enough to see. Um, yeah, just keep your eye out, because you know the especially grizzly bears, they'll claim certain um, certain carcasses, and they'll become very territorial of them. Be it a bear or a dumb hiker that was in the wrong place at the wrong time, it can still happen. So that is all I've got for bear safety at least uh, through the lens of Mike um, but the the real grumbles going on right now are in my stomach and I need to I need to take care of that so it's time for dinner and yeah moving moving on to the evening I'm usually familiar with calorie deficits on trips like this but tonight the energy bars and freeze-dried meals just couldn't quite quell my rattling stomach half empty my cravings for calories couldn't compel these tired bones to make any more food Perception of the world around me was slowly starting to narrow, and while I crashed hard, the crepuscular critters in the valley were just getting their day started. Heavy eyes were making a convincing argument for bed, and before I lost that battle, I made sure to glance at my map. From satellite images, there was a sequence of beaver ponds upstream, well, a few miles upstream. As my eyes closed for the last time, I figured something new would be better than nothing. There's something strange about sleeping alone in the backcountry. The need for sleep somehow surpasses the fear of what lurks in the dead of the night. And if you're lucky, you wake up undisturbed right where you'd closed your eyes. And so, there I was. 
Those thoughts lingered like the morning dew, but not for long. Ooh, wet socks. Nothing better. Hey, Wolf. Hey. Oh my God, did you guys see that? Oh my God. Hey. Man, he hit the Tokyo Drift so fast. He must have not heard me. Oh my God. Forget Yellowstone, this is where you need to come to find some wolves. There he is, there he is, there he is. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. It's really hard to see him through there. But that little gray speck is a big gray wolf. Holy smokes, there he goes. Holy cow, he ran up on my camp. That is insane. Oh, there's a black one up there too on the ridge. Oh my God, that is so intense. God, he just ran up on me, dude. Well, it looks like they've gone up and over, but uh, who needs caffeine when you have a morning interaction like that? That was, that was very spooky. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it is so wild back here, I swear. It's undeniable that human and wolf interactions tend to be extremely rare, and even when they do happen, the chances of them being violent are even lower. I would like to think that data drives most of my decisions, but after that weird run-in with those two, my bear-weary disposition was heightened to new levels, which I didn't even think was possible. Hey, bear. Hey, wolf. Because <sighs> I guess I gotta say both now. In true mountain fashion, if it ain't one thing, it's another. A thick haze slowly crept over the far side ridge, and boy howdy, that looks like some heavy rain. My day had just started, and it was already looking to be a wet one. Ah, oh, now it's coming in. Now she's coming in. Son of a gun, man. And I am caught with my pants down in the open. I need to find somewhere to hunker down. See what the water looks like. Looks like somebody goes down here. Okay, this looks to be our beaver ponds. About to get muddy, I guess. It's always fun. I just want to see a fish. Just show me a fish, would ya? Just a fish. Jumping over. Yes. Yes. Oh my God, we didn't get stung. <laughs> what? Kind of had to manhandle him up and over some stuff, but uh, that is number one on the day. <laughs> A very wet day. We'll get that hook out. And we will let him back. Oh, 
Wow, I think it's an even nicer fish. Yes, 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 on the top water. I'm stripping it like a streamer and they're crushing it. What? That's insane. That right there is a beaver pond West Slope Cuddy coming up and macking the Turks. That's so cool. All right, we're just gonna quick let him back. Okay, and we're good. See ya, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I doubt they're gonna be all that picky up here with uh, very limited pressure, but still, something big, something buggy can be uh, used as a top water or as a uh, streamer. This is, uh, yeah, this is great, but this rain's giving me perfect cover. Don't know how many more I can pull out of this run. I mean, who knows, but that's that's too, like, a really nice west slope. That's, that's oh, phenomenal, man. Okay, I'm just gonna strip it. I'm just gonna strip it. Just gonna strip it, see what happens. Okay, nothing, 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 nothing. All right, okay. They're eating it off of the strip. That is, that's so cheating. Here we go. Easy as that, barbless boy. See ya. Thank you. I wonder what happened if I actually put on a stream. I bet that'd be crazy. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that was so cool. Oh, dude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, strip, strip, bang. Oh, you fat little cutthroats are greedy. You guys are so greedy. I don't know if that picked up, but it was a strip, strip. He came out of the water, strip, strip, boom, and he got it. That was, oh my gosh. <laughs> this is nuts. This is so crazy. <laughs> oh, golly, John. He does it. All right. And you're good to go, buddy. See ya. All right. Beaver Dam was a success. And that one ought to have a few fish, right? Well, this risk had already been made more than worth it. Knowing there were other fish in the system was quite the relief how aggressive these cutthroat were. I treated the other runs much the same, but really didn't get so much as a sniff. I am choosing the wrong spot to come in. I'd be better up there. Also didn't help that maneuvering through the flooded fields of willows made for extremely slow progress. My usual strategy of covering lots of water was rendered next to near useless. On a warm sunny day, I could see this being bearable, but waist deep in the mid 50s mixed with the cold rain was getting to be a bit of a chore. With my stomach starting to grumble and the rain showing no sign of stopping, I doubled back up to the trail and hunkered down in a relatively dry spot. Mr. Newton would have been so disappointed in me and I know better than this. Truly, a body in motion stays in motion and with the feeling now completely lost in both my hands and feet, my plummeting core temperature was now a very serious issue. <sighs> All right, I gotta get up. I gotta get moving, I'm getting too cold. My body temperature is dropping so fast. <sighs> I will give that our explore. Man, that's free to come out and warm things up a bit.
You know, this has been a really difficult system to figure out. I, I have no idea um, how these fish are distributed throughout because on our first hole of the day, literally beginner's luck, I mean, pulled out a bunch of really awesome fish. Went downstream a little bit, nothing. I mean, I hit similar pools, but nothing. And then subsequently, each run I've gone upstream, I haven't even seen a fish, no bites, no nothing. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know what this weather's doing. It's getting to be close to the afternoon and um, just being wet all day, I, you know, my, my core temperature as a whole is very much down. Um, I don't know, I might, I might double back and start heading towards the original hole, fish that, and then, I mean, yeah, maybe make a fire and hunker down again, because this is, um, these are those kind of weird temperatures that can be dangerous if you don't, um, if you don't play your cards right, so. Hope those, uh, hope those squirrels are chirping at me. Let's, uh, let's giddy up, get out of here, and, uh, yeah, get back to that original spot. My blood was slowly starting to pump again after a few miles on the trail, and my watch still read pretty early in the day. Halfway back to camp, I let dissatisfaction detour my decision making for just a bit. Even after just a few minutes, my core temperatures were plummeting yet again as my empty cast went unanswered, but I could at least say I tried. I just do not get this creek. It just seems to be more of the same. Just kind of empty, empty frog water. No, yeah, no real, no real fish. I don't know, I, this is so weird. Clearly, I was missing the mark on these fish and I really don't think it had anything to do with fly selection or presentation. My gut feeling was leaning towards odd fish distribution throughout this strange system, making for these massive gaps in action. So I took my tail and made the final march back to camp. I was absolutely soaked through every layer and starting to feel deep shivers trembling up my spine. Okay, I am back in the tent. I've got some dry clothes on and feeling dry and feeling warm. That's a that's a luxury. But uh, yeah, this rain. I don't know what to what to do about it. I might send out a couple messages. Um, have some friends and family check the radar for me. See what the heck's going on. Um, you know, it's moving into the afternoon, so the fishing portion of our day. You know, if it's done, hey, it's done. But uh, yeah, I might review some footage, eat lunch, um, maybe nap, listen to a book, I don't know. You know, there's uh, you know, two sides of, of this backpacking thing and the very active side of, you know, hauling into somewhere and fishing and running and gunning and doing all that stuff. But then you do have days like this and I don't think these are often talked about, but the kind of, um, yeah, the kind of days where you just, I don't know, what do you do? Sit and think and... I don't know, enjoy the sound of the rain, I guess, but yeah, I'll check back in, I'm sure, if and when something changes or if it doesn't change, so. Okay, let's, uh. Let's get away from the tent for a little bit. Let's go have dinner under a tree where it's nice and dry. By the river too, that wouldn't be bad.
Well, hello, Mr. Osprey. Nice of you to join us. New dinner was cooking, didn't you? I love me some peak meals. Okay. I think that might just be plenty. Well, as you can see, I am under a tree right now. The tent was slowly becoming my own personal hell, so I had to get out. And yeah, I mean, it's dry enough under here, enough to make dinner and enjoy the scenes and the sounds because, yeah, this is our last night here in the backcountry, um, at least for this trip, and it's been, it's been okay. It's uh, had certainly its high points, but there's been a lot of, a lot of grind, but hey, that's part of the game. So, yeah, I'm going to enjoy this, eat some dinner, get some more fuel, and yeah, I don't know if I'll have enough energy to stay up past the rain. It's supposed to end soon, but... I'm not, I'm not too convinced, but yeah, we'll see. It's looking about done if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Al dente. <laughs> Towering Pine did a surprisingly good job of blocking the rain. While I cowered for protection, the local dipper was having a dandy time dining undisturbed in the downpour. Further up the creek at the Camp Honey Hole, large rings toward the back of the pool caught my eye. Wait, what? Oh, there goes another one. Talk. At first, I figured it was just the rain, but soon I realized the dimples were far too big to just be water droplets. Yeah, eh, maybe I ought to get off my lazy butt and give fishing one last shot. My time was running out fast, and I didn't walk all this way to just sit and watch the water. Well, by some uh, miracle, the rain has subsided for a little bit. So I think I'm gonna, I don't know, put on a dry fly and go down and at least try and catch one more fish. At least, at least one more. Perfect. Thank you, buddy. You know, when I was just sitting there watching them in the rain, I knew they were happy. I knew these fish were very, very happy, ready to just munch anything. And yeah, that parachute did the did the job, which is phenomenal. And I, I don't know. I feel like I should push my luck. We'll see. I might, I might catch around a little bit more. These stranded cutthroats seem to have a similar feeling with regards to the weather. Much like myself, they are making the most out of this brief break in the rain and show no bias towards my bugs. Admittedly, it felt a little corny to be pestering the same batch of fish for the second night in a row, but after being cooped up for this long, the small evening bite was a welcome change of pace.
No rain, stop. Oh, 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 boy, 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 boy. Oh, boy, that means some big fish. Holy smokes. That was him. That was him. That was him. Oh man, that was him. Oh, it sucks. Oh, that's a big fish. Nice. That might be the best one of the trip. That's a great fish. Finally got one of you smart sons of bitches. Golly. All I had to do is put on a streamer. You can tell he's been caught before. There we go. What a great fish, man. That's so freaking sweet. Thank you. There we go, just some little bully bugger type streamer did the job. I don't know why I got so lucky, but I got so lucky that one of the best holes in this system is by my camp. So I might toss a couple more, yeah, maybe one or two because it's starting to rain again and it's almost bedtime. So yeah, great last fish if that's going to be the last fish. That was in fact going to be the last fish of the day, which meant it was time to cut my losses and cozy back into the tent. My body was still weak from the strain of the day and there was no doubt tomorrow was going to be a very, very long hike. <sighs> Hey, bear. Hey, bear. Hey, wolf, anything. Oh, wow. The tent is just soaking wet. I would consider this a pretty early start, but the threatening clouds gave the illusion of much darker skies. The waterlogged gear strewn about the camp was quickly put away with cold hands while the dim light of the day slowly revealed itself. Oh, you son of a bitch. Overall, I would say camp is breaking down pretty fast. Um, you let that tent dry a little bit more. I don't know how much it's going to do, but while it is somewhat drying, I'm going to make some breakfast. I've got a scrambled egg breakfast thing. That seems pretty good. Some fuel for the morning. And uh, yeah, once that's done, you know, the rest will be packed up pretty quick. Shove the wet tent in its bag and we'll be, we'll be on the road. So yeah, I, need, uh, I need some breakfast. All right, let's see. Oh, put too much water in, perfect. Got some egg soup. I always do that. Light pitter patters gave me enough warning to preemptively put on the rain cover before hitting the trail. Looks like today was going to be another cold and very wet day.
this weather is so crazy. That's a big dog. Hey bear. <laughs> yeah, so let's go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Get this godforsaken pack off my godforsaken back. Whew. Okay. Oh, mama mia. Oh, mama mia. That's a dry camera right there. Oh, get off of my back. Let's get you. Wow, f crushed it. Damn. Damn, dude. <whistles> mama, there goes that man. Say, Mama, there goes that man. A fair bit of time has elapsed since this adventure wrapped up, but even just talking about it, I can still feel that cold rain on my skin. With the way filming has gone over the last few years, I find myself fishing with friends more often than not, and there's nothing wrong with that, but even when I would go solo to certain places, they would often only amount to just a day trip and not all too far from safety. This right here was the first trip in many years where I truly felt exposed and very vulnerable with each step away from the trailhead. Clearly, if you're still watching, you can see this was by no means a perfect trip. In fact, I would say this was far from even good if you were to just look at this through a fish-focused lens. And don't get it twisted, the fishing was fun, but only finding two productive spots on a system this big was a little confusing to me. I should have taken the fanciful words of some old timer with a heavy grain of salt and really considered all the factors before embarking. Now, I would be the first to admit that time actually spent on the water wasn't nearly enough to fully figure this place out. The weather, it certainly didn't help with that. So maybe if I had a few nice days, this would be a completely different conversation. Rain and cold was a theme throughout these few days alone and this is one of those elements that really aided in rekindling my love for diving into the backcountry alone. Between that and the real threat of wildlife encounters, I was able to leave these misty mountains much more humbled. As weird as this sounds, having risk throughout an adventure is important. There's something so satisfying about going in, making it happen, and then making it out alive and well at the end of the day. That's why I was so excited at the trailhead. And you know, trips like this one, they're always such an interesting time to self-reflect and do those much needed internal audits. So hopefully there will be many more opportunities just like this one here in the near future. But that is more than enough for me, folks. All I have to say is wherever you find yourself, be it in the Montana backcountry or in your backyard, I sure hope you keep those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.